Welcome back, Acron fans! Welcome to another replay cast, this time between Nail and Shadow Fury 33. I'm Shadow Fury 33, your host. This is on Tomb of Heroes, and Nail very quickly choosing his species. He's going for CISO, and very quickly pausing for his perfect start. Shadow Fury, on the other hand, is going for Vekir. Also pause for his perfect start, as usual. Shadow Fury going for more economic start, 3 RPs starting out, though hard to tell what he's going to do from here. Nail, same thing, though very quickly sending Marine over to the expansion, preparing to expand there, while sending a special up to Scout. This is very normal. So Shadow Fury will probably be going for... I'm not sure what he's going for. This is a bit of an earlier game in the 1301 patch cycle, so... Shadow Fury now is going for a lot more rush strategy, a lot more early Zion Pulsar rush, but at this point, I think he's trying to go more for economic play, trying to get quick Zion Turcher up as usual, as he used to before. Nail on the other hand with CISO, probably going to go for Fast Factory, probably going to go from there to ATHCs, and then from there to Mar Tanks very quickly, though he's focusing on his expansion very quickly, which is good to see. Tomb of Heroes is a very sp spread out map, there's a lot of expansions, mostly all on the south side of the map, there's one on the north side of the map that's a bit harder to get to from ground, so it's easier to get to, but not as many resources, not as many spots to put crates, or put RPs, I should say, not as many spots around the crates, and, well, opening, opening scout, nail wins, we see, continuing over to Shadow Fury's base, and... Nail very quickly getting an importer. Wow, right? Off in the corner. Not a bad idea, actually. T like I said, Tomb of Fear is very spread out, very easy to actually hide buildings like importers and other similar buildings, so it's harder for your opponent to harass them. Now, Shadow Fear, on the other hand, oh, I do remember, he was actually going for scouting. As you can see, the Teth Fear is setting up a comm hub right next to this importer, because this is back when Shadow Fear would go more for scouting, try to get more comm hubs around the map, and it's actually not a bad idea to do if you can. If you make sure to pay attention on the timeline, jump around a bit to see what's going on at different points in time to see what your opponent's up to, to build comm hubs around the map, or mounds, or comm centers, and then use those for vision. As you can see though, Shadow Free does spot the importer, Nail noticing this as well, and Nail is going to be, hmm, from the looks of it, sending his marine out as well, so keeping his main base pretty much undeveloped. Sending marine out, looks like he's going for a proxy strategy, probably going to build a factory right here, and then move- no! Even closer proxy strategy, this is pretty risky actually. So Shadow Fury has Foundation ready for a depot in case he needs it, but not going straight for it. Probably just keeping it there just in case he needs to jump back in time, doesn't have to spend as much resources building it up. And it looks like Shadow Fury, well, building a comp next to the importer, but far enough away that Nail will not see it. So Nail's importer does not have the vision range to actually notice it, but I still think he's probably gonna scout around, find the Teth Beer, find the Calm Hub, and make that useless, so I wouldn't be surprised if Shadow Fury went and jumped back in time, moved that where it ultimately was. And we see, uh, this is back to the battle we saw before, Teth Beer, has something changed? Has Shadow Fury changed this? No, Shadow Fury's actually three minutes ahead of here, he's at the four minute mark, Nail's at the 140 mark, so he is not paying much attention to this Calm Hub here that, nicely scouting out the expansion over in the corner, though Shadow Fury is jumping back, and looks like he is actually moving the comm hub, so it is going to be harder to spot. Nail will not see it coming, though Shadow Fury will have a harder time seeing the expansion from that comm hub position. And it looks like, actually, Nail's sending up... Is he sending both his marines? Yes, he is sending both his marines forward. So, and here's that proxy stra proxy base I mentioned before, both the importer and the factory. So the importer is no longer built here, which Shadow Fury notices with the Teth Beer. And... That is going to be a... That's going to be tough for Shadow Fury to deal with. I mean... Proxy strategies are tricky enough to deal with, especially if you don't know they're... Well, if you don't know they're coming, that's what makes them tricky to deal with. Because... Hey, they have units right next to your base, you could have fought them off, but... Eventually they get enough units that it's very difficult to actually deal with it. So this is going to be... Tough for Shadow Fury, though unfortunately neither players really see that proxy strategy coming. The red time wave here, before Shadow Fury's position, will carry it! So we see the factory and the importer, but no units have been built there yet. Nails, but too far behind. But Shadow Fury has built his depot, jumming back to the 250 mark before the depot that we just I was mentioning was built. He is getting that comm hub up. It looks like he's probably babysitting it a bit. And defending, I guess, has special ops. Oh, this is why the foundation, of course. Healing. <laughs> so early Veers can actually defend against infantry attacking. This was before ATHC's rushes became really popular. Against ATHC rushes, and actually on this map, ATHC's rushes aren't as big of a deal, but against ATHC rushes, foundations plus infantry aren't nearly as useful as just straight Zion pulsers. As we mentioned in the God game that was that I casted last, uh, early Zion pulsers kind of developed as a way of countering early ATHC rushes, and they turned out to be very powerful on their own. 
But that's an aside. At this point, Shadow Fury is not going for early Zion Pulsers, but Nail is going for an early Proxy Factory, as I mentioned before. And it looks like this Marine will probably... might be building something as well. Probably... we kind of... Audacious if he built a resource processor in Shadow Fury's expansion, though Shadow Fury hasn't used it himself. Still, I doubt he's going to be doing much with it other than just keeping tabs on the expansion, making sure Shadow Fury himself isn't grabbing it. And... Proxy, as we saw before. Shadow Fury doesn't seem to be changing... Well, he can't change much here. He's further in the future. Further in the future, where Shadow Fury is, he is... Hmm, he's got 130, 113.48. Should be going for a Zion Turcher any second now. That'd be usually what he goes... Oh, never mind. Already has a Zion Turcher. So Shadow Fury has a Zion Turcher. Very typical. Common thing to build first. And... Another Zion Turcher being built up, because Zion Turchers are nice cloaking harassment units, great main battle tanks, and also, if Nail happens to use Twin Mars, then it's going to be easier for them to fight them. Now, I should probably point out, small change in version 1.3.0.1, compared to 1.3.0.0, is that Mars and Twin Mars were swapped, basically. The roles were completely switched, so Mars are now the... The direct fire, low splash damage tank buster, while Twin Mars are the long range artillery, which kind of makes more sense given the barrel type, and also means that you don't have any reason not to build Twin Mars. Originally, Mars were just so useful because you had cheap artillery that was extremely powerful, pretty much can only be countered by air. And then Twin Mars were this direct fire unit that you couldn't do anything with. While now it's been switched, so Twin Mars are the artillery. So if you need to actually do the Mar Merge in order to get the artillery, it also means that Mars are not nearly as scary as they used to be. Though they are still pretty scary. Anyhow, that does mean that because Zion Churchers had a damage reduction against artillery, that they now have a damage reduction against the Twin Mars and not the Mars. So it's very important to note because it'll probably come up, as we saw, Nail was building a macro fab at about... Oh, where was that macro fab? Well, there we go. He is building a macro fab right now. And this Macrofab, of course, builds Mar tanks, and the Mar tanks, of course, are now not artillery. But Nail looked like he was searching ground units further in the future, and that will allow him to get Twin Mars. Now, at the same time, actually, no, not at the same time. Two minutes ahead, in Send Dimas time, the same time. But Shadow Fury is getting a couple Shin Pulsers for scouting purposes. Hasn't really seen what's going on. He does, however, he is spotting the the proxy base with his Zion Pulser, and that. That is not good for Nail. So Shadow Fury will be able to fight this off, though, or at least know about it, so he has a chance to fight it off. Still rather late, though. At this point, at this point, Nail has the Macrofab and the Factory. This is going to be... <laughs> okay, Nail's commenting in the chat. Yeah, it'd probably come up. Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder how Shadow Fury knows what would come up. Yes, I realize this. Of course I played this game. But... For the benefit of the audience, I am going to keep myself as ignorant as possible, or at least not give anything away. Also, because this game happened a month ago, I'm actually not perfect memory about what happened. Anyway, Nail is getting ground units, so he will be able to get Twin Mars if he so chooses. And he's also... Wow, I've... Huh, that's interesting. Didn't expect him to do that. Yes, for reference, this is an island right here. That's that's not actually a place you can get to normally. I, hmm, I thought I'd stop infantry from being able to walk behind that hill. Oh well. Anyway. No, you cannot get marines over to that island without transports or teleporters. So yes, here we are. Zion Pulsar is finding the Macrofab. Nail... This is that Nail's point of view. Chattafree's point of view... Zion Pulsar is actually dealing a lot of damage to the Macrofab, but Chattafree is unfortunately two minutes ahead of Nail. He does have his Shin Pulsar coming out. I'm a bit surprised. No Shin Turchers either. Nail actually not spending a lot of money over there. Seems to be rather QP bound at the moment. He has 16 QP and 200 LC. He does have one Martank coming up, but... Hmm, doesn't look like he's actually building a lot of... Where are his crates? There's one QPRP there, one LC, two, R, two LC, three, five LC, and three QP. Hmm, does seem, still seem to be QP bound. Anyway, 646 mark, first Martank... Well, first Martank built, another Martank being constructed. While well, Zion Pulsar comes back to deal with this. Now, Nail will probably be able to actually fight back pretty effectively with the Martanks. Like I said, they are basically tank buster units, and they're definitely tougher than the Zion Pulsars are. And they don't have the numbers. Yes, they have no so Martanks will win this fight. The Zion Pulsar is going down very quickly. Like I said, Martanks now being direct fire units and doing a hell of a lot of damage. So that is not going to go well for Shadow Fury. He's going to need to. He's going to have to work hard to deal with this. Teth Searcher coming up. 
Not entirely sure why, because Teth Turchers are for anti-air. They're decent against ground, but need, but against this needs Shin Turchers. If you're gonna go for air units, Shin Turchers. Shin Turchers are the only answer here. So, both Martanks coming up. Like I said, this is Madlu Sub 4. Also, Zion Turcher harassing the RP over here. Probably not gonna do too much. Like I said, Nail is QP bound at the moment, and that is an LCRP, so not the most useful. And it looks like ATC attack from Nail is going to be fended off by Shadow Fury. Shadow Fury is building another Zion Turcher. I think he's relying on the damage reduction, but that. Well, that actually might work. Against Mar tanks, though, no. But a Twin Mar is being. has been merged in. So we do have a Twin Mar, as I mentioned. Hooray! This is the Twin Mar I was talking about. Yes, yes, I knew it was coming. But it's there. And it's scary. As you'll see now. Or not, actually, because it's close. But. I should also point out, Martanks have lost their anti-air attack, and yes, this is in fact a buff, not a nerf. Martanks had a terrible anti-air attack, so not being distracted by air units is in fact a buff for them. Anyway, regardless, it does... it's not a great position here. An ATC, however, and... oh, another small change. ATCs are now detectors, which cannot cloak, although that was a change of 1300, I believe. Still, like I said, Twin Mars are pretty scary now, aren't they? They're... Yeah, that's... so... Not sure what Cheddar's gonna do from here. He's got his... Uh, design Pulsers coming up, and he needs quite a few of those in order to actually deal with this properly. And the Twin Mar doing what it can, but the ATHC is tearing it apart. Second Zion Turcher coming in cannot do enough, although it does get rid of the ATHC quickly enough to stay alive. A Frigate coming in, try to help out, and I don't think... Nail is not machinery, so he does not have... The only detectors he has are ATHCs, which are pretty cheap, so it's not too hard for him to get them. And around the rest of the map, it doesn't look like much is going on. We have the comp hub back where it was, Zion Churcher over here, which isn't doing much of anything. I'm not sure why. Shadow Fury must have just simply forgotten about that. He is building a comm hub right next to Nail's base to see if anything is coming out of there, but frankly, I think it's a little bit late for that, seeing as Nail is right outside of here. And I, yeah, Shadow Fury is really putting his scouting in the wrong places. That is kind of embarrassing. More Zion Pulsers coming in to try to deal with this. Nail back about 30 seconds down from there. Well, that's dealing with the Zion Turchers. Zion Pulsers coming in, however. The Twin Mar is still, like I said, very scary unit. About two hits gets rid of the Zion Tur Yeah, these Zion Pulsers have no chance against that Twin Mar. Which kind of makes sense given the cost, but that is still pretty insane. So machinery is being researched in the armory at the 10 minute mark. And that will allow for Tornads, more detection, air detection, so Zion Pulsers can't get rid of them, Zion Turchers can't easily get rid of them. A Zion Turcher is trying to get rid of this Importer, but it will only be able to kill one reserve if it does so. But at least Shadow Fury pay attention to that. And that Twin Mar is not going down, that is dying hard. I think it's killed about four Zion Pulsers without breaking a sweat. Okay, got half damage, but still, without pretty much breaking a sweat, it's killed four Zion Pulsers. Still, the Turcher actually turned out to be a not terrible idea. Able to defend against the Fergus. Shadow Fury about a minute up from here. Dealing quite a bit of damage to Nail's main base, but really, this proxy is what matters. There's... I mean, this importer here has... It's being used. It's being used quite well for dealing with everything here. And like I said, this Twin Mar is... Really, I'm surprised these aren't used more often, because... Just look at the damage! Look at it killing everything in two or three hits! Yes, I have it. I do like Twin Mars. I wish they were used more often. I... I'm quite glad for the artillery change, because it means that there's actually a reason to use them. They actually are better than Mar tanks for the effort to get them, but... have not seen them very much otherwise. And the frigate goes down, so... that... Teth Turcher actually may pay off. Bit of an odd choice. However... Still... Still concerned that there isn't a Shin Turcher or anything like that coming in. And... I think the Twin Mar will finally go down, though this is... This is after Nail moved it away, so this is actually not going to happen. The Twin Mar... No, it is going to happen! Never mind, the Twin Mar is damaged enough, the Ted Turcher will be able to take it down. I think Shadow Fury might actually be able to pull out of this. Because right now, Shadow Fury has pretty much lost map control. He has some harassment going on in Nail's base, so Nail's losing his backup strategy... Well, not losing, but he's, his backup strategy is getting slightly harassed. Slightly. But losing that Twin Mar is going to be pretty big. A Blackbird coming in, however. Blackbird's now cloaked, by the way. So... They are now the cloaking units of ATHCs. And they're still healers, but so they're cloaking healers, which I actually really haven't seen used much. This is This is the first game I've also seen Blackbirds used much in of the current patch. I Hopefully they are used in other games as well, but 
yes, that is the new change there. Like I said, I think that that is a change from 1.3.0.0. And looks like Shadowfree will be able to fend off this attack, but jumping back near the unplayable pass to make absolutely sure he can do it. Getting rid of an ATHC, the Blackbird getting attacked enough by the Teth Churcher to deal with it. Martin kind of out of the way for defense, but still, it is close enough. This might not work out. Martin, like I said, will beat Zion Pulsers quite handily. Both the Teth Churcher support should be enough. Nail about 30 seconds down, though, and it looks like he's probably going to be able to command... He's going to likely command this Martank into position to attack. His main base, however, getting actually pretty heavily damaged. He lost that factory in his main base. He's losing in the armory, though he has the research he needs right now. He's probably not going to get gay tech or anything. He does not have a secure enough position to get gay tech. Though he might, he might risk it. Or he might have risked it if he had the armory, because it looks like he's not doing much to defend it right now. And... More Zion, more Zion Beers in the main base for Shadow Fury, just in case, for either for expansion or... No, mainly for expansion. Wasn't sure if it was for expansion or for more Zion Pulsers and Zion Churchers. Tank coming in to try to help defend, but the Macrofab has been destroyed. Shadow Fury managing to take out that proxy base while also damaging Nail's main base. Tornod, however, will be able to take care of the Zion Churcher, no problem. But at this point, Shadow Fury has managed to fight his way back into the game. And a Shin Churcher coming in. I was wondering when that would come up. It is now up. Shadowfear, of course, expanding at this point, because Nail, like I said, has gotten small expansions around the map. Though his main base was heavily damaged. And that Zion Turcher is going down, but it has done a lot of damage. Huge, huge amount of damage there. Definitely worth it. And one of the Tethfears managed, or the Tethfear from the Teth Pulse, Teth Turcher, I should say, that went down, managing to get back to base to rebuild, heal up, get a new vehicle, and... I think, I think this is it for Nail, actually. Nail's, yeah, he, Nail's assuming he's lost. I'm not sure he's going to surrender, though. He does have quite a few resources, and he th does have, he has a factory, he has a marine, so he can rebuild if he needs to. He is actually building up an armory to try to rebuild. But his proxy base is definitely gone. There is no getting that back. Still, it did put Shadow Fury on the ropes for a while, and now Shadow Fury's trying to recover. I mean, look at just the resources. Nail has, Nail has twice as much money as... Shadow Fury does, and has a more secure position. He has another... Actually, he's going for another proxy base. How about that? So another proxy base in potential. He has... His main base is doing okay, though the Shin Turcher is doing a fair amount of damage to it. Shadow Fury will probably be scouting around the map to see if he can find any other proxy bases in case they exist. And he does have comm hubs around the map, just to double check in some common... common locations that armies may pass through, but none where common locations that expansions might be located. However, one of the combos is being destroyed, so Shadow Fury's vision has been reduced. Nail, on the other hand, not too worried about that, has not been spotted. Designed Pulsar's actually going around, avoiding the expansion entirely, surprisingly enough. While Tornad here, pretty confident about what it needs to do, coming back and will actually find this combo hub here, but not destroying it, opting to simply move away. Nail must put on a move order, and will be here to help defend against the Shin Turcher. Probably will be able to... Yeah, with the mech, it will be able to defend. No problems. The Shin Turcher will not get anywhere. Shed Fury getting Halcyon class. Hmm. Interesting. Not sure if he has enough money to actually afford Halcyon class units at this point. But he does find the expansion. So Nail will have the expansion coming under heavy attack while the Shin Turcher needs to retreat. Still, the main... Yeah. Nail has surrendered. Holy crap. That was a close game. And okay. Now speaking as having played that game... That was really bloody... That was so close when I was playing the game. I thought I was going to lose. That entire game, I was so sure I was going to lose after seeing that proxy base. That... I was on the edge of my seat that entire game, hoping I would pull back into the game the entire time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. We have another game coming up in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned.